Joe McKenzie here. Today we're going to mix paint. Usually what happens is you're watching me work at the easel and I'm either doing a time lapse or I'm later on I'm narrating it. We're going to do this quote live because I don't know how I'm going to mix a color until I actually mix it. So the palettes below me, we're going to go down there and we're going to mix some colorful grays. This is how I learned how to do it. I did not learn how to do it from books. I have to see somebody actually do it. So there we go. There's the, the palette. That's pretty good. All right. So the question was asked about what does it mean about warm and cool grays? And it came up because I've been painting. Um, here are some of the cool grays that you see, warm and cool grays that you see me mix. Now the reason I've been mixing these is because I've been painting these glass objects with clear liquid in them. So there's no color there. So the challenge is to find as much color in gray as you possibly can. And some of that becomes invented. Now let's look at this again. And let's just talk for one second about what does it mean to have warm and cool grays. I don't mean lighter or darker, although of course that plays into it somewhat. A warmer gray would be something that has more yellow or orange in it. And a cooler gray would be something that has more blue or perhaps, um, yeah, blue. Perhaps violet starts to make it a little bit warmer. So, so that's all you have to know for now. Anyway, this is about neutrals. So like I said, I'm doing this live narrated, so um, I'm not going to be very eloquent and I'm probably going to say um a bunch of times, which I hope not to do. So let's look at, first of all, how people will ask, well, how do you mix a gray? I know a lot of people love Payne's gray, and I'm not going to get into a discussion about that because I have strong opinions about it. I like to mix my grays. Now, in order to mix a gray, you kind of have to know about the color wheel. So color wheel involves a, a yellow, which I'm using Naples yellow in this case, a blue, and in this case, I'm going to use some cerulean. These are your primary colors, yellow, blue, and then a red. But in this case, I don't want uh, a red. I'm, go I'm going to use a um, permanent rose. So it doesn't matter at all which one of the uh, primary colors you pick. You can pick any of the primaries. But what's going to happen is when you bring them near each other, which I'm going to do right now, and have them join, you'll see it makes a gray. Now, you already know this because usually by the end of the time that you've been painting a painting, many painters will look down and see that their palette has turned. They put color down on their palette and they've been painting for a while, but then they look down and they see it's gray and they think that their color has disappeared. Where'd their color go? Well, this is what's happened. Colors have run into each other and neutralized and turned into gray. So here's the gray that I just made. Okay, let's take a look at that for a second. It is not warm. Well, I, I, mm, it's not warm or cool at this time. The reason it's not warm or cool is, is because there's nothing to compare it to. The minute you put something to compare it to, you, you have a reference. So let's say I had this gray. It's about a mid-toned. By mid-toned, I mean I'm going to pick up my value finder. I'm sure the mic is going to make all kinds of noise to do that. But let's take a look through the value finder at it. Yeah, you see it's about a mid-tone. So there's my first gray. So let's say I'm painting that uh, glass that I showed you and I have this gray, but that I can't have just one gray and I can't use water to make it lighter. See, watch what happens if I use water to make it lighter. We've talked about this many times before on my YouTube channel it will become lighter, but it loses any intensity. It gets weaker and weaker. So in effect, I haven't really accomplished my task. If I was to either make this a uh, darker or lighter using water, you en whoops, then you just end up with a monotone painting. There's no other color in it. Uh, very similar, to, let's say you would use a blue pencil to uh, draw something and you didn't do anything other, I mean, you just use that same blue pencil all the way through. You'll end up with a beautiful drawing perhaps, but it's gonna be all, all blue. All right, so let's say I want to make this 
gray, my original gray. I'm going to go back and reconstitute it so it's it's back to the thickness that I want it to be. And if you're wondering about this, this just comes from practice. Lots and lots of times of practice of knowing thickness of paint. You have to mix a lot of paint in order to get what you want. Watercolor is much more mixing than it actually is painting. All right, here we go. I think I came pretty close here. Let's take a look. Yeah, pretty close. So there's a gray we originally started with. Now, if I want to make this gray warmer, then I have to think about the color wheel. And I think, okay, in order for it to be warmer, I have to add some kind of yellow to it. So I'm going to take some of it and put it over here. Although in actuality, I wouldn't actually put any over there. I would just mix some more. And I'm going to add more of the Naples yellow to it, which I've done. Now let's, let's take a look at it. All right. Uh, that's too warm. It's almost going into a yellow. So when that happens, now I've got to go back and compensate for that. And you really have to sneak up on it. So I have my pile. I take a very tiny bit. I just put a tiny, tiny bit. And I'm not using water. I'm going right into my pile. It's taking a tiny bit of cerulean blue on my brush. I took a tiny bit of the permanent rose on my brush. Mixing it up. Let's see what I get. Uh, that's a little too red. So I need to put a little bit more of the cerulean in. Okay, a little bit more cerulean in, and there we go. I think I got a. I think I got the gray I wanted. Let's take a look. Um, need my value finder. Let me see where I put that. All right. My goal, remember, was to make a warmer gray than this gray right here. Warmer gray. Warmer meaning adding more yellow to it. And I could have used any yellow I wanted, but I decided to use more of the Naples yellow. And hopefully what I have then is a lighter and warmer gray. There's the one that was the initial one. Now I'm going to pull the value finder up further and you can, it's almost impossible to see. So that's what I wanted to do. Oh, of course it's it's impossible for me to get them both in the frame at the same time. Um, but you can clearly see that one, even with the naked eye, I think you can see that this one is darker and more cool because it has more blue in it than this one, which is lighter and has more yellow in it. So let's continue that exercise. I'll go back to the first pile. I'm very careful with my brush. I'm going to get rid of any water that was on it because I don't want this pile to become more watery. That's not going to accomplish my task. So I'm going to reconstitute it back to that original gray. So I have a gray that's cool and a gray that's warmer. And now I want to make a gray that's cooler. In order to go cooler, I have to think about the color wheel. And so I think, OK, I need to put some blue in. Blue will make it cooler. So I'm not putting any water in, just adding a teeny tiny bit just on the corner of my brush to add it into this pile and see, is this going to indeed be cooler? Let's take a look and see. It's going to be easier to see if I put it here. There we go. All right. Wow. It's, remember, this was my warmer gray. That is definitely cooler than that one, but it looks about the same as this one. I haven't accomplished my task yet. We need to go even cooler. So I'm going to put some more blue in. And I'm using ultramarine blue. All right now I've added too much ultramarine blue. I've gone too far. So I'll take a look at that. You'll see, see how blue that is? And I want to stay in the grays. So in order to accomplish my task, I've got to neutralize that blue. In order to neutralize the blue, I clean my brush off really, really well, put in a tiny, tiny bit of orange, just a tiny bit, because blue and orange are opposites on the color wheel. That'll just tamp that blue down enough to neutralize it and make it gray. I'll put that in really close. It's 
hard to see the difference, but there is a difference. This one, I'm going to point with my finger, this one is bluer and this one is grayer. All right, so let's kind of review what happened here. I started with making a gray. The way to make a gray was to take all of, uh, was to take three primary colors, and you can pick any of the three primary colors. You mix them together, not equal amounts. You have to do the mixing yourself to see what works for you. But if you put three primary colors together, they will neutralize each other and turn into a gray. There's no question about that. I, one, this is one of my favorite grays, which is cerulean blue, naples yellow, and a permanent rose. So that's what, that's what happened here. That was my initial dab. Then I tried to make things lighter. I demonstrated making something lighter by just adding water to it, and that just made things weaker, and that's not going to work over time. So what I did instead was I added more Naples yellow to this, and I ended up with a more neutral gray, which I think is... Oh boy, I lost track. I want to think it's... Well, let's take a look and see which one it is, looking at it. Okay, this is my initial. I think my more, my warmer gray is probably, oh, I lost track. It's definitely not that one, that's too red. So I wanna think it's that one, but that's too cool. So, I'm gonna go back and mix a warmer gray. I don't like any of these warmer grays. So in order to mix that warmer gray, I'm adding some of that Naples yellow. And let's see. Uh, that's not warmer. Let's try again. This is why it takes so long to paint those that, that cup. It just takes such a long time making these dabs. That one's warmer. Yeah, that one is warmer. Okay, so that was adding Naples yellow to it. Made it warmer. I mean, at the end of the day, you end up having to make a lot of color dabs, but what you're gonna be doing is first initially making your gray from your primary colors. In order to warm things up, you're gonna add either more yellow to it or more orange, probably more yellow but in tiny, tiny increments so you can control what's happening. And likewise, if you wanna make your gray cooler, you're gonna add blue to it. Now I used ultramarine blue in this, so I didn't get involved in anything as dark as Prussian blue or indigo. So you could do the same thing with any three primary colors. But if I had picked Prussian blue, um, let's see, Prussian blue, alizarin crimson, and a cadmium yellow, these grays would look very, very different. Which might be choices that you make depending on what your, let's say it was a, uh, a city street scene, like a New York City street scene on a dark day. Well, that might be the, uh, the triad, the three primary colors that you want to make your grays from. In this case, I'm dealing with uh, an object that's clear and it's a not sun directly on it day, but a sunny day. So I don't know if that helps at all. You have, but what I am saying is you have to know your color wheel. You have to know what your primary colors are and then know that you know, when you put them together, they'll neutralize each other and, cre and create grays. It's either gonna create a gray or a brown, one or the other. And likewise, if you don't want to get involved with three colors, which I like to do, I like to work in triads, but if you want to work with two colors, know your color wheel in terms of opposites. So if you're using a um, alizarin red and combine that with a viridian green, that makes a beautiful gray, just a beautiful gray. And then you can control how warm it is by either adding more red to it or making it cooler by adding more green or blue to it. It's all about kind of dialing in. Now, what I don't, I advise, of course, mixing and mixing and mixing, because then when you go to paint, you're not wondering, oh, what do I mix? You know, because you've mixed already, so you know a lot of your colors and how they combine. You just know that 
really well over time. I do find, I, I don't know the color charts are helpful. Here, I'll bring this back up. If you stayed with me this long, it's a blooming miracle. But anyway, um, I don't know if color charts are helpful because color charts are only as good as they are depending on them being within the context of a painting. So you can make a color chart, and I've seen people make lots and lots of those little squares, but a square, let's say a square of yellow, for example, on one color chart might be really light. And then depending maybe on a painting which where you used only high keyed colors, you bring that yellow in and it could be your darkest element. You don't know that. You don't know until you put it within the context of a painting. And what I like to do is work with a really limited palette so that all my colors get mixed usually from the, the first three primaries that I choose. And in that way, the colors all kind of integrate with each other. And I find otherwise it can look as if um, things were just sort of, how do I explain it? Just look a little off, not terribly off, but enough off that you think, gee, something's not right there. And that can often happen, um, oftentimes in desperation, if things aren't going the way I want to in a painting, and I get desperate and I think, oh, you know, let's, let's, you know, especially near the end of a painting, if I don't feel like I've defined my darks well enough, oh, I might go into an indigo well, for example, pick up some indigo, which is always a very, very bad mistake because I haven't used any indigo up until then. As soon as I do that, and I still do that foolishly from time to time, but if I do that, the painting sunk because I haven't integrated it into the painting all along the way. And so it just looks like, it just looks like, to me, <laughs> it looks like a big pimple on the, on the final piece. It, it just will never be right and it always strikes me as being wrong. So I'm not, I, I hope that's somewhat helpful. What I'm talking about is mixing for neutrals and then mixing for warmth. If you want cooler colors, then you're going to mix toward your blues and your violets. If you want warmer colors, move toward your yellows and your oranges or, or, and sometimes your reds. And then when it comes to neutrals, for example, like I have some neutrals on my palette. I have burnt sienna, I have quinacridone gold, and I have, ooh, I wanna say yellow ochre, which I never use, so I almost hate to mention it. Those are there, but I find it so much easier to mix them myself. It's just so much easier because I can control how warm or cold I want them to be. I wanted to insert my color wheel here. I think it's really important to make your own color wheel. You only have to do it once and then you can always refer to it. This is pretty much the only color chart that I use. You need to use the colors that you use on your palette because you're going to have different results than what would happen if you use, let's say, a dip someone else's paints or a different brand, for example. So this will tell me for sure exactly what my primary colors are and so I can quickly look and see where do I need to go in order to neutralize. And I just look across the color wheel. I work, work, work around the color wheel for brightness and across the color wheel to dull things down or to neutralize. Okay, remember to keep the white your paper white, your paint's wet, master value notes for color. See you next time, bye bye.